Hello, hello, my name is Andre. I'm the founder and CEO of Border Zero, and today we're super excited to announce the Border Zero Terraform provider. If you're working in infrastructure, you undoubtedly are familiar with Terraform. You know, it's infrastructure as code. That's how we all like to deploy our infrastructure, particularly if you're using things like AWS. So many of our customers are using AWS, and so it only made sense for us to, to uh, release a officially supported Border Zero Terraform provider. And that's what I'm going to demo to you in this video. Um, and so to make it easier, we've uh, made available an example repository that I'll walk you through. Basically, in this demo, we'll clone the repo. Um, and we'll do Terraform plan, Terraform apply. And what you'll see is how we bring up an AWS environment just for this demo, which is a dedicated VPC with private subnets and a NAT gateway, and then a bunch of resources in them. So what we'll deploy is two EC2 instances, an ECS cluster, and an RDS MySQL database. And then in there, we'll deploy the uh, border zero connector as well. And all of that is done in Terraform. So it will only take a few minutes to spin that up, and we'll have a bunch of AWS resources as well as the corresponding uh, border zero sockets. So after that, we'll quickly walk you through how it all works, validate that it works, and that's it. And hopefully you'll see how easy it is. So let's get going. To get started, we'll just follow the instructions uh, as listed in this repository. So first we'll check out the repository. We'll just do a git clone as shown here. That will download all the files. We'll go into that directory, and then we can just follow the instructions from the readme. So the first thing we need to do is create an API token in the Border Zero portal. So we go to Organization Settings, go to Access Tokens, and then create a new token. In this case, I'll call it Terraform. I'll give it the permissions of member, and 30 days is enough for this demo. So I'll copy that token, and then I'll export it as an environment variable. You can also define it in the Terraform variables file, uh, but in this case, we'll just do that. That's better. Um, if you want to, you can also now set the various AWS credentials. I already have them set locally in my environment, but I will override the region. Um, so we'll set it to US East 1. So that's it. Next up, we can do Terraform init which will initialize the Terraform provider, which basically means it will download all the necessary modules, uh, mostly the AWS modules, and of course, the Border Zero module. After the provider is initialized, we can now create a Terraform plan and then apply that plan. We'll follow the instructions, so basically type in Terraform plan, and then Terraform apply. And what's happening now is Terraform is creating a whole bunch of Amazon resources as well as border zero resources that map to these new Amazon uh, resources. Now this will take a little bit, so this video is sped up. Um, takes about five minutes, particularly the RDS database takes a while, but remember we're creating a brand new VPC, NAT gateways, private subnets, an ECS cluster, two EC2 instances, a border zero connector, and an RDS database all within a few minutes and then automatically create border zero sockets out of this. And as you can see, 58 new resources were created. So let's take a look at the Amazon portal and see if we can find them. You can see the EC2 instances here, two EC2 instances and the connector. Let's take a look at ECS, see if we can find our newly created cluster and the tasks. And you can see that we have two containers in this cluster to support our Nginx tasks. Finally, we have an RDS database. Let's see if we can find that one. And that will validate that all of the resources that we wanted are created. And indeed, I can see my RDS database now as well. So Terraform was successful and created everything we wanted for this demo. We should also validate that Terraform created the border zero resources. So let's take a look at connectors. I have a connector here called Terraform. Uh, it's green, so that means it's up and running. That means that was successful. Um, and if I click on the sockets tabs, I can see a number of sockets or services that are linked to this connector. The first one is the connector itself. This is how I get SSH access to the connector. Um, and then we see two more, one called server one and server two. These are SSH sockets for the two EC2 instances that we just created. So this is how I can get SSH access with just my single sign-on credentials to EC2. I also see this um, HTTP socket. That's the HTTP socket towards the ALB before that sits in front of the ECS cluster, and that's how we make the two Nginx containers available. I also have a SSH socket for the ECS cluster. That's how I get management access to the two containers in this cluster using SSHs. And then finally, we can see the RDS cluster. Um, and this is a database socket towards this RDS cluster. And this is how I can manage my database. 
Next up, let's see if we can access these newly created resources. The easiest way to do that is to use the client portal. So I'll click on the top right and there's a client portal link and it will bring me to the client portal. It will show me exactly what I as a user have access to. As you can see on the left hand side, there is now a section called Terraform example with different regions underneath it and it automatically detected uh, that we deployed in US East one. So the first two uh, tiles you see here are SSH sockets for the two EC2 instances that we've created. So let's log in and see if we can get a shell. And as you can see, it was really easy. I immediately got a shell and at no point are we being asked for credentials. All I need is SSO access uh, and if the policy allows it then I will have access. And what's important to note as well is that these EC2 instances run in private VPCs and so we don't need a VPN. All of that is taken care of by Border Zero. The next one is the HTTP socket. This is an HTTP socket that sits in front of an ALB that we just created that sits in front of the ECS cluster with two Nginx containers. And as you can see, I'm being asked to authenticate and now it's being load balanced over the two containers. So this is basically SSO access to an internal private app without the need for a VPN. Uh, we can also see an SSH socket towards the ECS cluster, which is what you can see here. You can see the two containers um, and this is how we can get shell access to the container. Um, this is using SSM in the background, so Border Zero integrates with AWS SSM. Uh, this means you don't have to install anything special on your container, so you just leverage what's already existing. Finally, we'll select the database. Uh, so this is the RDS cluster that we just created, which is a MySQL database. As you can see, all you need is SSO access and that's it. I don't know the credentials of this database. This is all being brokered by the Border Zero connector. Now, uh, once I selected the database schema, I'm just browsing around. This is obviously just a demo database. You can see all the tables and just quickly explore the databases. Um, there's also a schema view so I can see what that looks like uh, and a history to see what queries were being executed. So as we saw, everything works. Um, I was easily able to see everything I have access to. All I need is my SSO credentials and I was able to log in to all the services that I as an engineer have ac need access to. To learn more about Border Zero and its Terraform provider, go to our documentation page at docs.borderzero.com or go to the Terraform registry and find the Border Zero provider and you'll find plenty of examples there. And if you're curious after watching this and want to get your hands dirty, go to borderzero.com and sign up for a free account and start your automation journey today. Oh, before I let you go, don't forget to type in Terraform Destroy after you're done.